Um, now you may look at that and go, mm, that's all right, but it's not great. But what happens when I increase the quality? Boom. Now that to me looks very, very nice. And the most impressive part is if we move it around, look how quick it is, you know. Granted, my computer is not the best, but you could not do this with a Nerf. In the previous video, whenever I moved the camera to a new position, I'd have to wait about five seconds for it to render a proper image. This is, you know, pretty much instant. Granted, as I say, I haven't got the best computer, but if you had the latest and the best, you could get 100 FPS on this. And you're also running off a web server, right, which is going to be way slower, sending images, retrieving images. Yeah. Let's have a very quick look at Nerf, just in one minute from the previous video, and then we can talk about something that's totally different, which is called Gaussian splatting. What they do is they take a series of RGB images, and from those RGB images of a scene, they're able to reconstruct it in 3D using a neural network. So if you remember in Nerf, what we have is we have a scene that's in 3D, and maybe we have an object that we're trying to reconstruct in our scenes. We did a Christmas tree in our video, so sort of like this. And the reason that I don't draw these things is because they're never any good, right? Like that. That's actually That's not, pretty good. It's almost symmetrical, which <laughs> I'm very pleased about. Now, with Nerf, you have some camera viewpoints, so let's say this direction here, and you fire rays through your scene, like this, and you sample points along this ray, and you ask a neural network, what is at that point? And you say, okay, so in here it's transparent, there's nothing interesting there, but here it's green and there's something there, right? And if you do this through enough cameras and enough rays, you can slowly build up an actual representation of your 3D objects in the neural network itself, which very basically means then your, your scene, which you can now render from any point, is literally a small neural network. It's just a trained renderer in some way, right? Yeah, which yeah. is really quite cool. Um, so this took the world by storm, not well, pretty recently, actually. About three years ago. Three years ago, but, right. I mean, three years, and, and we're talking about how it's already been replaced. Yeah. It's a bit of a bummer. But, you know, um, it, it is what it is. But, I mean, actually, I think there probably is still time to use Nerf, but I think that it's good to discuss these, these alternatives. Yeah. So, anyway, the, the, the good thing about Nerf is that your entire multi-camera scene is represented as essentially a small neural network, which you can just run from any point. Right? The bad news is... It tends to be pretty iffy if you have unconstrained views. We saw that our Christmas tree worked pretty well, but some of the surrounding areas didn't work very well. And it also takes a long time to render. If you want to render a new picture of the scene, then you're going to need to shoot rays from all the different pixels, a bit like a proper ray tracer, yep. sample along them, and then you've got to find exactly where the, the place, the object starts and all this business. That takes a long time. Even with sort of new versions of Nerf that are better at doing this, it's still quite a slow process. Traditional graphics don't work this way, and Gaussian splatting is perhaps a little bit more close to uh, traditional graphics. Yes. All right, so I'll, I'll be quiet in a moment, but what I'll just say is the first thing, just to make sure everyone's aware of, Gaussian splatting is the idea of representing our scene as a series of points, but our points are now not a single speck, they are a small Gaussian. Right? So what is a Gaussian? Well, if you were looking at a two-dimensional or a one-dimensional Gaussian, you'd just be looking at a graph. Right? So you would look at something like this, a normal distribution, right? And, and you know, this, and it goes on the axis like this. So in one dimension, a Gaussian looks like this. You can imagine in two dimensions, it's kind of a hill. And then in three dimensions, it's a kind of blob, which is sort of bright in the center and fades out in the, in, um, around the edges. And if you dot a lot of these around a the scene, you could imagine, you, you know, just small ellipsoid things that dot around the scene. You could kind of start to construct an object out of those. Yeah. And that's kind of what it does, right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, so off, off you go. Okay. Jack. Let's, let's find out how it works. Right. So let's go back to the scene with the Christmas tree, because I want to show you what this would look like. See, let's see if mine's any better than yours. But, um, so let's just do an Challenge outline accepted. of what it should look like. What kind of tree is it? It's the fake one I get out of the box each year. <laughs> but, it's, but it's never quite the same shape each time. So that's an outline of what it should look like, right? Now, if you're going to represent this with a bunch of Gaussians, in reality, these Gaussians are very, very small because they have to be accurate and accurately represent your scene. But it would look something like, like that. This work a little bit like the kind of triangles we see in computer games. Exactly, exactly. These are just a different way of doing that. So. Traditionally, when you have like a mesh, uh, these would be a series of uh, triangles that are all joined together to make different faces yeah. and stuff like that. 
Um, these are just basically a bunch of very clever circles that can stretch, can change. You know, they have different colors, opacities. They look different from different angles because of the spherical harmonics of it, different stuff like that. But basically, very clever circles. So realistically, it would look something like that. So they're all different shapes and yeah. sizes. Um, but in reality, these would be very, very small. Um, so how do we get these to that position, right? So to start with, to, you know, I'm not going to go into massive detail about it, but you use structural motion to get basic understanding of uh, a bunch of point clouds, uh, and then you connect them, uh, these Gaussians, in between the points. So let's say you've got your edge of your tree here like that. Is that, is that, can you understand what that is? <laughs> well, is it a bit of tree? It's, it's a bit of tree. Let's right, just say right. it's a bit of tree. It's about right. as well as I would do, yeah. yeah. So you go, all right, these three points here, you see, and so you start getting a bunch of these. So these oh. Gaussians aren't centered on the points? They're in the average, yeah, the mean, yeah. the average. So if you were gonna render that, you could see it was a Christmas tree. It wouldn't look like a very good Christmas tree. It would look, it, in a way, it would look a bit like you have a point cloud of a Christmas tree, which is that you have a sparse set of points which give you the rough idea of where something is, but don't look nice because there's a lot of gaps. Yeah, it would look like something from PS1, from like the very early games. Which, you know, for someone my age is actually still quality graphics. Mr. Box. Yeah, so how do we improve that? What you do is you first rasterize it, okay? This is what's different to Nerf. You're not doing ray marching or ray tracing, you're rasterizing, which is why it's so quick when you uh, render it. If you were rendering a scene using, let's say, triangles, what you don't do is ray cast out and look at the triangles. You can, you can do that, but that's quite a difficult way of doing it. It's, it's good for photorealism, but not for real-time rendering. Yeah. What you normally do is you say, okay, given this triangle in 3D space, where would that be on the screen? And let's just paint it on the pixels. And then you might add shader effects or, sh or, or lighting or something like this. But this can be done in the same way. We know where our camera is, we know where our Gaussians are, so we can say, well, let's remove that Gaussian in front of the image and just paint it on, right? And given that the Gaussians have different colours depending on where you look at them, and they have, let's say, transparency at the edges, you have to do a little bit of work about um, blending those colours. Yeah. But after that, it's pretty much standard rendering. Yeah, pretty much. It's, it's so... The way they've done it is, is very clever because they've used modern graphics techniques to speed it up, but essentially, they're using rasterization, which has been around for decades. So they're using basic techniques, but using modern uh, advancements to make it quick and make it so that these Gaussians work. How would you get these Gaussians into a good position? So you have your camera here and you go, right, so let's say... Just to confirm for the viewers, that camera is our viewpoint to see this. Yes, it's our viewpoint. And for because we're training it, we have to have a reference uh, image for training. So this would be something in our training set that looks like that, I guess, you know. So I say, right, I want to render this point here. What you do in a Nerf is you shoot out a ray like that and you go, where's it, what's it, what's it, what's it, what's it, what's it, what? and you see how that, if you're doing that for every single pixel, it's just so slow. Well, with these Gaussians, you go, right, what's here? Oh, well, we know the ga one Gaussian's there, one Gaussian's there. And so you basically know, right, these, for this comfort in this, um, situation you have two Gaussians here you go right which one's first that one let's say it's completely um, opaque therefore you can just render that there and then it's just that dead simple and then of course you know you, you do that for every single one but that process of just going what's there oh there 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 do some alpha blending do some depth testing that in itself is so much quicker than having to query every single point along your ray in the environment, which is why this can do real-time rendering at 100 FPS, while Nerf, it's like 0.2 FPS. You see how that's such a speed up and why everyone is so excited about this? Uh, well, you're more excited than me, I think. Uh, I, yeah. I, uh, no, so what I would say, so because we're talking here about rendering, I think we need to talk a little bit about how we optimize these Gaussians, because the first initial estimate of Gaussians you get are not going to be that good. Yep. So let's imagine that you've got some testing data where you've got a, you know, let's say a plant leaf or some other thing that you've got, which, which sort of looks like this, right? And you've got some Gaussians that maybe kind of sort of fit it. They'll be sort of like this, won't they? Yep. Um, and then the question is, there's really a few different options. You can try and make this Gaussian a bit smaller so it fits better. Yeah. You can make this Gaussian a bit smaller. You can maybe put a Gaussian in there. Could do. I mean, what, what different things does it do? The main thing that it does is it will compare that to the reference image and go, right, that should be that color. Therefore, this Gaussian should be a little smaller, a little bigger, more opaque, different, different shades, 
That's, that's what the main thing does. And that just uses gradient descent, which is you know, very clever. They're not using massive uh, neural networks to do this. They're just using standard gradient descent to do that. That's the first thing that it does, and it does that very well. However, what they realized is that doing that, you sometimes get, let's say you're trying to represent an area like this. Let's say this is some sort of crescent moon ball ball. If you're trying to represent that, they found that occasionally you get a Gaussian that is too big. It's trying to do too much and it would look something like that. And it's overfitting that thing. So this is why I like to say that these Gaussians are a bit like cells because what they do is they go, right, I'm just gonna split this in half. So suddenly you'd have your crescent moon here and then you'd have two Gaussians here. Rather than one big one that's trying to do too much, you'd have two small ones representing that environment. Another example is, I'm drawing so many crescent moons right now, is you'd have a Gaussian, let's say here, that's trying to represent that, and it's too small, it's underfitting that scene. So what you do is they go, right, let's clone it, draw another one, and you can see how that is able to fit that scene so much better. So these Gaussians, as I say, they're like cells. They move, they change, they duplicate, they divide. They fit your environment so well that you, it becomes photorealistic, basically. So we start off with essentially a pretty simple point cloud of a scene that is pretty obtainable based on standard structure for motion methods. And then that is not going to be great first go. Right? We stick some Gaussians on it. Some of them are too big, some of them are too small. We clone some, we divide some, and we slowly, using gradient descent, jitter these Gaussians to fit them better into the scene until eventually they start to look a little bit more photorealistic. And actually you're doing this over multiple views at the same time. So you're not just doing it in one picture, you're doing it across all the pictures of your scene simultaneously to make sure that their 3D shape reflects the 3D shape of the object. But what you basically get is a really posh point cloud. Yes. Right? Once you've got this Gaussian scene, you need to be able to render it because the idea is that you can render it from any point, not necessarily the point, just like with Nerf, not necessarily the points you had in your original data set. And they use pretty standard, standard techniques for this. So the first is you use essentially a Z, a Z buffer to prevent yourself from drawing unnecessary Gaussians that are already occluded by ones in front. That's so like if you, depth buffer. Yeah, depth buffer, right? So, so basically, you know, like you, as you've already drawn in, if you've got a ray coming through here, you know that this one's in front of this one, you just don't bother to render the ones behind. But it's a little bit more complicated because you also, some of them have transparency, so you have to do alpha blending. That's also quite common in graphics. So you've got something that's partially transparent sitting over something that may also be that, and you just slowly add these things up. But you, if you make an effort to only render the things that are, you absolutely have to, a great number of the Gaussians never get rendered per scene, and it's very, very quick, right? yep. which is how, what sort of FPS does it get? 100 FPS. Right, nice. Perhaps we should go and have a look at some examples. Yes. Okay, so here we are at my desk. If you remember last time, we captured this lovely Christmas tree. And what I've done is I've retrained it on a Gaussian splatting model. So this is actually using Nerf Studio, which was the same framework we used last time, but we're using their model called Splat Facto. I'm going to talk about what's different here. If you have a look at certain parts of the scene here, this bush, for example, it's made up of these almost like these shards these are actually the individual Gaussians here that make up this bush. See if I can zoom in here. So for example, like that, that's in itself a Gaussian. That little one, there's a Gaussian. That little one, there's a Gaussian. By themselves, they mean nothing, right? But as soon as you zoom out, you can see that's a bush because it's made up of the hundreds and hundreds of thousands and thousands of these Gaussians. What's outside look like? That's one of the things I want to show you. Was, uh, last time in the Nerf, when we looked outside, it was just pure noise. It looked really weird. And people go, you know, what's all that about? You know, it looks really strange. But if you zoom out now, it suddenly looks like a traditional video game. Can you see how all of these Gaussians are inside the room here, inside the atrium that we captured? Anything outside is just black because there's no Gaussians there. It's just going to render a blank background, which is black because you're not relying on a neural network to represent this scene. So there isn't noise or anything like that outside of this, this thing. It goes, there's no Gaussians there, just render it black. The only thing you have is these really big shards, which are Gaussians that essentially have tried to capture the whole sky or capture the whole of an outside building. The further away you get from where your images were actually captured, the more noisy your Gaussians are gonna get. Exactly, so if you look over here, can you see this floor here doesn't have anything there. That's because during the, in the training images, we never captured this floor. So there's nothing there for it to render. It doesn't render anything there. And this is another problem. This is the same problem that Nerf had, is that if you don't capture things in your scene, it won't render anything there. There's no sort of, 
you know, it doesn't help you out and go, well, this is probably a flaw, let's Tony's just... Intuition, right? Exactly, yeah. There, there are some, probably some models that are coming down the line which can use diffusion to sort of fill in the gaps, but for now, it will just render it black. So, which is why, if you ever capture a Nerf or a Gaussian, make sure to capture the entire scene and make it look, you know, capture as much detail as you can. You're probably thinking, okay, this is all good and stuff, you know, and you're going, oh, Gaussians are the best, but what's some fun stuff we can do? Well, I'm gonna show you something that I, I managed to cook up in Unity. Unity is one of the main frameworks you use for creating games, and you can import these Gaussians straight into your Unity project, which is great, because if you want to, let's say, have a, a scene of your house in a game, capture a, a Gaussian splat, import it into your Unity project, and then suddenly you can do different things. And this is another thing that Gaussians are so good at compared to Nerf, is that these Gaussians are physical things. It's not represented by a neural network. So for example, this Christmas tree here, if in the Nerf I wanted to move that a little bit to the left, no, you can't do it because you'd have to retrain your neural network. With these Gaussians, if I wanted to move the tree a little bit to the left, drag and drop takes a second compared to 30 minutes it takes to retrain everything. So that is another thing. These Gaussians are so much easier to work with than Nerf. We're inside Unity now. So I've imported all these Gaussians into Unity. And actually, Unity make it a little bit easier to see. These are all what the Gaussians look like. They look like shards, almost. Um, so what I've done is I've set up a little particle um, effect on these Gaussians. So when I press spacebar, they're going to explode into a series of particles. So I've set up a little camera system here as well. So I'll show you what that looks like when I click space. You see, you couldn't do that with a Nerf. Um, but there's something a bit, bit strange about these particles. They're mini Mike Pounds. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> this is meant to show the power of Gaussians. It's showing an unnecessary feature of Unity. In <laughs> <laughs> so. If you want, you could, you could go home, capture a Gaussian and create a universe of mini mics if you want. You could not do that with a Nerf, you see. And so, you know, if we let it play out, you can see there are millions and millions of, of mics in this multiverse. So, As it I should be. That was a, yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was a nice little demonstration to show how powerful Gaussians can be. Yeah. How powerful. Yeah. <laughs> that, thanks, Sean. Good job. We're done. Yeah. What this does is it renders it very quick because you need to get an understanding of the environment. But nerfs are slow, right, for real-time rendering. Yeah, this is unremarkable so it in itself, seconds. but the interesting part comes when we start applying these rules. We can start from like a seed organism, like like you said, call it maybe the